Thank you. Uh, so this is my uh, first time here at uh, LGM. Uh, so I'm a bit uh, impressed, but I will do my best um, to present myself. Um, just before, uh, I should uh, have shared the stage um, normally with uh, Nikita, but she couldn't make it, so I, I'm doing it alone. Uh, but it's okay. Um, presenting myself quickly. Um, so I'm a graphic designer, and then I learned to uh, craft website on my own after the studies. And I'm also uh, teaching for seven years now, um, both in private and public schools at the University of Strasbourg. And I'm teaching uh, UI, UX design and uh, basics of uh, HTML, CSS to, to students to learn to prototype their ideas. Um, and so I, when the, when the, of the first question, uh, when you are teaching like technical stuff is which are the right tools to teach to students. And um, there's a kind of dilemma uh, with this question. Uh, and this, this quote by Silvio Lorusso um, talks about it. Uh, I'm just reading it. Both students and faculty conceive the schools through either a materialist and idealist uh, lens. On one side, materialists share a pragmatic focus on future employ employment skills and, and market needs. And on the other side, idealists are divided between pessimists and optimists. There's both. Uh, there's two camps. Uh, one can be represented by uh, Illich. Uh, pessimist idealists argue that the school is a place of discipline and repression. They also lament the subjugation of education to the labor market. And on the other side, with the optimist like Bell Hooks, maybe you know her. Uh, Optimistly, the school has a space for liberation through the exercise of critical thinking and the suspension of familiar preconception. So, on if you see the materialist size, uh, side, you can think like, I need to learn uh, software uh, to prepare them to the studio, graphic design studio, to the to the market, to be a freelancer with uh, to be able to work with clients, etc. So you you have to choose the most used tools uh, in the in the disciplines, stuff like that. And on the other part, as a teacher, you, you, you need to open students to new tools and new way of doing stuff and possibly with open source tools, uh, of course. And even in this uh, side, you, you have different way to, to look at it. But it's uh, so in, in design, cool, design schools right now, in when you're teaching UI and UX design, there's only uh, one software. And this is Figma, okay? So I, I think you, you, everybody know Figma because it's very popular now, but it's uh, basically, it's a software dedicated to digital design to uh, craft your UI uh, prototype and be able to look at some code, but this is not designed for that uh, first. Uh, and then as a teacher, I want to, uh, to learn uh, to students uh, alternative tools like PenBot. And PenBot is, uh, I think, the the only uh, alternative in this field, uh, uh, I precise, uh, of uh, UI UX prototyping uh, for crafting like mobile apps, websites, um, software, UI, um, stuff like that. Um, PenBot is. Uh, they they just uh, released the second uh, major version. Uh, I just I'm just listing the, some of the new features, uh, and I will talk about it later. Uh, like uh, CSS Grid, which is kind of uh, a really interesting way of uh, approaching it. I will talk about it later. Uh, new UI redesign, like in dark terms, stuff like that. Component system totally uh, uh, rebuild. Uh, new way of uh, dealing with images, HTML code generation, talk about this later, and some performance improvement, even if it can be better. So, um, but before um, looking uh, at comparing Figma and PenPot and how PenPot is, is different, I would like to give more context about the past, present, and future of this kind of softwares, uh, software, sorry. Uh, to, to design UI and, and UX. So what tools did we use for web design? Like uh, around uh, 2000, like everyone was uh, 
using like Photoshop, uh, even like Dreamweaver and those, those kind of Adobe software to to design like website uh, uh, prototype screens, stuff like that. There's also Flash MX for the, the older ones, um, which was bought, bought by Adobe. We'll talk about this later too. Uh, but yeah, everyone was on Adobe uh, software, and this 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 wasn't tools uh, designed for for that. Like Photoshop is not for doing interfaces; it's like for working on photo. But uh, everyone was fine. And around like 2010, uh, there was a sketch uh, which was uh, a Mac only, Mac OS only software. Still, uh, still exists. And it was kind of um, revolutionary because uh, they tried to uh, create a software dedicated to UI design and like not incorporating all the stuff you don't need in Photoshop and Illustrator to uh, to uh, to have something like more uh, on point and sp uh, sp specialized on this topic of uh, user interface design. And they uh, bring like uh, concept like symbols uh, that was. Uh, already symbols in the Illustrator, but they push it further. Uh, stuff like uh, component systems and stuff like that. So it, it was a kind of uh, f a fresh air for the UI industry and uh, practitioners. And then in 2015, uh, here comes the first version of Figma. Uh, and it was the first cloud-based um, collaborative software to dedicate it also to UI, uh, UI design. And it was uh, a, a, a big uh, push in this industry. And uh, a lot of uh, design studios try to uh, use it and to uh, to abandon uh, Adobe softwares. Uh, also because it was, it was web-based and collaborative, so uh, no more problem of uh, compatibility between Mac, Linux, and uh, uh, Windows and stuff like that. And having like a single soft source of truth for everyone to work on was um, uh, a really uh, big point. Uh, around those years, like 2019, uh, uh, Sketch was uh, uh, the the main uh, one, but Figma was uh, like the the challenger. And when we see the these stats from the UX tool survey, uh, you see like uh, that. Th 2020 was the, the the shifting year where Figma was uh, becoming the the main tools that that everyone use. And I was also this this person because I was the, one of the first to organize like Figma meetup in Paris. So yeah, everyone can change. And uh, so it's me on the left, and uh, I was everyone at the studio was super super exciting. We even. Uh, invited uh, Tienfeld, uh, which is younger than me, uh, and is now a multi-billionaire because he's a Figma CEO. And uh, everyone was happy, like Figma is the best tool. Uh, uh, so it, this was the, the narrative uh, at this time. And then uh, Adobe like uh, wanted to uh, buy uh, Figma. It was in 2022. But a uh, few months later, uh, they abandoned uh, the, the acquisition uh, because uh, of the regulators' uh, law from UK and uh, European Union. Uh, so under pressure from regulators, uh, there is th this article, uh, and it was like the it, it could have been the the biggest uh, acquisition ever uh, if it uh, was will like twenty billion. I don't know if. Uh, I'm not sure you, you can imagine how how big it is. Uh, for example, uh, when Meta bought uh, WhatsApp, it was uh, the second bi biggest one. It was seven, 70 billion, I, I guess, in 2017, yes. Um, no, it's not in the right order. No. OK, no, no problem. So now uh, Figma is, uh, is still there. It's bigger than ever, but uh, sorry, I missed the slide. Okay, no problem. Uh, so the the they they didn't bought it, but Figma still uh, tr um, is still the first. And like when I say the first, 
it's a, it's a big, big uh, monopole. Uh, bye bye uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch. It's, it's like you, you can replace like with Chrome, uh, Firefox, and it's, it's, it's the same. Um, so it was like uh, last year, a uh, big uh, UX tool survey. Uh, so this data is, is really reliable. So um, Figma is still the, the big one. And when you look at the competitive market uh, in this field, uh, Figma is is uh, kind of the all-in-one tools doing like wireframing, mockups, prototype, and some sort of code export. And Penpot, which is uh, here, is uh, in the same uh, field, like doing all all this uh, part of the the industry uh, of uh, UI software. There's also uh, people that don't use this kind of software and they, they, they prototype and code directly in HTML and CSS, but th this is another type of, um, of practice. Uh, here we are talking about like uh, freelancers and design studio who need to uh, prototype and mock up stuff uh, before uh, going to code. Uh, so Penpot. Um, can Penpot be a viable alternative to Figma? To to do that, um, uh, s some guy on the Penpot forum tried to uh, calculate the parity between the two uh, with a uh, <laughs> very complex uh, spreadsheet and tried to do a like, percentage score of uh, every small feature. So it, it's uh, up to date. Uh, this is the last one. It's a screenshot from uh, last uh, yesterday. So you, you have a 71% parity, which is an uh, interesting stat. But you, I will share the, the slide with you. You can click on it and if you want all the details. Um, but what, what makes uh, Penpot like uh, a singular in this field is obviously the, um, the fact that it is open source and the fact, uh, the fact that uh, they try to um, stick to the standard. And when we talk about open standard, uh, we are talking about SVG, we are talking about uh, CSS, and HTML stuff. So you have some quote from, from, their, um, from their website. Uh, building a design tool on top of web and dev standard is super clever, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just to say like uh, they are uh, not trying to add another layer uh, of abstraction uh, on top of standards. They try to stick to the standard and just uh, represent it through uh, a user interface, which is an uh, interesting approach, I guess. Uh, to to be more explicit, uh, on the left, uh, you have the the Figma auto layout, which is the name they found to just say Flexbox, which is the way you do stuff in code in CSS. And uh, this uh, this is a, an, an interesting object of uh, user interface because they in this uh, small. Uh, three by three dots grid this is a way to represent it in like combination of uh, combination of um, flexbox justify content and align align items uh, depending on the direction of the flexbox and, and to simplify it for non-technical people uh, to try to align stuff in uh, 2d space uh, but by doing so uh, they uh, create uh, new vocabularies and, and that uh, creates a distance between designers and developers. And I, I think it, um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's useful to bring more uh, non-technical people, but it uh, creates a uh, separate field with new vocabulary out of, out of nowhere. And I think um, the Penpot approach is uh, more interesting because they try to stick to the CSS vocabularies uh, so you you find the the, the 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 terms like justify content, flex direction, row or reverse, flex wrap, uh, row gap, column gap, stuff like that, and they even go further uh, by implementing like the grid layout, which is uh, not available in Figma. So this is a way where uh, Penpot is going further than Figma in this di this, in, uh, this direction. They uh, try to represent complex um, concept of uh, CSS and ali alignment and uh, propose a way of um, representing through an interface. 
uh, with the colons, the rows, the, uh, all the, the combination uh, of, of this complex stuff at the container level and the cell level. Uh, the cell level, which is the, the item in, inside the container with the complex uh, alignment for uh, uh, like uh, cell spanning in the grid. You, you also have the possibility to name areas. So it, it, it's a uh, nerdy CSS stuff, but I, I think the, um, it's interesting to explore this field and how to, is it a good idea to try to uh, represent this and what's the best way to represent all this stuff? Uh, I think the the first proposal is really interesting. They also in introduce uh, introduce sorry like uh, real CSS unit like uh, fr for fractions uh, percentage uh, auto to like uh, let uh, the automatic uh, uh, alignment stuff like that and I, I think we can go further but it's a, it's a good first step. Um, this is a personal feature wish list. Uh, some stuff are already. Uh, in in uh, in the pipes, uh, but I think with this approach, uh, we we can dream of uh, you being able to use relative units, uh, uh, all the relative units we have in CSS like RAM, VH, VW, and all the new ones for uh, width, height, margin, padding, stuff like that. We can go maybe a step further by implementing CSS variables uh, like for color palettes, type scales font family, stuff like that, uh, with the real CSS, CSS export implementation. Uh, I think it, it, it's uh, in the, um, the way they are doing the stuff. Uh, they, it's, we, 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 it's easy to, to go in this direction. Component properties, design tokens, I, I know they are working in partnership with, uh, I, I don't remember the name, but with uh, some guys working on this topic uh, about design tokens and how to export it in, like in JSON and CSS. One of my personal uh, favorite one is like having a, a proper HTML5 export with semantic uh, tags, because right now it's only a, a div and paragraph mess, but it's it's, it's a first step again. Maybe we can dream about media queries and stuff like CSS filters and even shred text frames for paginated documents to create like PDF and slides. Uh, the slides you're looking at are done with uh, Figma, uh, <laughs> penpot, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> lapsus. Um, but uh, what I like in uh, in, in penpot too, it, uh, Penpot is, is uh, created by uh, a Kaleidoscope, which is uh, uh, Kaleidos, sorry, Kaleidos, which is a, a, a Spain um, organization, Spanish organization, and they uh, the first product they was known for was Taiga, uh, which is a project management uh, software they uh, use to uh, build other software like Penpot, and they so so we have access to. Uh, an open roadmap and what what are they working on and and we can see the the progress on each topic and and this is a really uh, interesting way for users like me I'm not related to pinpot in any way I'm just a teacher and professional designer but uh, uh, it's cool to to see how they listen to the community on the forum integrate like uh, feedbacks on the platform and make it public and so everyone can see uh, where are the what are y they are working on like week by week uh, in in I think it's it, it creates a lot of um, um, how to say it um, confidence between the uh, software developers and their uh, community uh, behind so you can look at for yourself if you if you type like uh, penpot uh, taiga uh, and, and, and explore wh what are the next steps uh, in the development so maybe to, to try to conclude before uh, doing a small demo, um, let's uh, divide the, the pros and cons. So uh, the cons are just right now, uh, but I, I think it, it's, it's evolving fast. So the pros, of course, uh, free on open source uh, and free of charge forever. Like uh, Figma is a, is a freemium model. Uh, you don't need to pay anything to use Penpot. Um, I, I told about it, like the open web map. I think it's really important to, to have access to, to the backstage. In open standard, standard name for CSS feature, 
multi-editor, multi-teams. Uh, you can create any unlimited project, unlimited teams, um, no, no restriction on that. You can self-host uh, Penpot uh, using LSTO or Docker, uh, which is quite cool uh, to have uh, uh, ownership of your uh, what you're doing on your data. There's all uh, there's an, an, an API, uh, and I, I didn't explore it yet, but uh, there's a whole plugin ecosystem uh, they are they are building to to do whatever you you can imagine uh, with this ap api like to like get some content some tokens some text uh, content and like inject it in anything you want like websites other application doing like web hooks and stuff like that to to use your pen pod file uh, maybe as a cms or something to store data and then export it uh, elsewhere uh, everything is possible i guess uh, with apis and of course, the, the community behind is uh, is really cool. They have uh, a forum where everyone is sh sharing their thoughts and cri uh, are critical about the, the software and share like s templates and libraries and stuff like that. And uh, to uh, as as an external uh, as a, as a user, I, I see that that they are really listening to the community, and this this is a um, a good point, I guess. So the the the, the cons uh, performance is better, but still a bit laggy. Uh, I I think it's better on Chromium, uh, but you you will try. A lot of uh, internal errors sometimes, like just a black screen, but <laughs> it it happens sometimes, uh, but never uh, too long. Uh, one of the thing I I would love uh, is the ability to work offline because it's it's a cloud-based uh, software so if you don't have any internet connection you, you cannot work which is uh, uh, problematic <laughs> in some times uh, but I, I think it, it could be uh, possible like to work offline and then synchronize your stuff uh, after a work session uh, if you work on solo on your project uh, i hope they are working on something uh, about this Pass tool, uh, pay, copy pasting layer styles, reordering styles, stuff like that. H H HTML export. I I will show you later. It's uh, it could be a lot 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 better, and still a bit buggy. Uh, but enough words. Maybe no, final words by Ivan Illich. You remember the idealist pessimist. Uh, convivial tools are those which gives each person who uses them the greatest opportunity to enrich the environment with the fruits of his or her vision. I really like this quote, and I think this is what we are looking for when we're talking about tools and software. Uh, and as a teacher, uh, this is what I want to uh, transmit and share with uh, the students. So let's, how much time I have? Like, okay, five minutes. Uh, I recreated like the <laughs> LGM uh, website uh, just for the demo. So not all the pages, but like the, the, the two main ones. Maybe I can do like this. Um, so you you can see the the two two point zero version, and basically it's look like uh, like this. You have your uh, your frames, uh, your layers here. Uh, you can create component. For example, I created one for the header, another one for the card here, and you drop instance of your uh, component here. Uh, here, every page is built in like uh, vertical flexbox, so colon directions. So every section can be reordered uh, simply by dragging them. So it, it's the the power of flexbox and uh, the, the way they implement it is quite good. Uh, and here I, I, I did a small um, demo of the grid layout. So I recreated a, a 12 colon kind of uh, grid with uh, 12 one fraction uh, columns here. And inside this, this grid, uh, every item, every cell, uh, you can define the, the first and the uh, so the, it's starting at the first column and ending at the third one, uh, so the third uh, vertical um, rules. 
So you see, it's it's uh, it's interesting to to see how uh, how it works. You can try to move stuff like that with the key arrows. Uh, if I'm trying to maybe change the size here, you see, it's re it's adapting to the grid. Uh, you have here you have some um, colors um, library you can create. Uh, same stuff for the um, the typographic styles you can create uh, and and this is in the uh, resources here so you have your components you have your colors you have your typographic style um, so this is the uh, basic of uh, the, the the design part then you have the the prototype part which allows you to connect uh, items in the interface and react to some interaction, like uh, I'm clicking on it, uh, open this URL, open this uh, frame, etc. Um, so, and this is re really close to what Figma did, and it works well. Um, and then you have the inspect panel, which is uh, interesting because you have all this Large panel, maybe. Okay, you have it split in, like in the CSS part and uh, HTML or SVG. Uh, Penpon can can export in both formats um, with a very different uh, way of uh, interpreting uh, the, the the layers. But let let's look at the the, the code it, uh, that it exports. Um, So it, it it's uh, a, a one page uh, with all the the style in a in a style uh, tag in the head. So, but even if it's uh, quite redundant and the, the class are are not uh, are like generated, but you you have um, a nice CSS uh, flex flexbox and CSS grid uh, way of doing stuff. Sometimes an encoding image. Let's let's look how uh, how it looks. Maybe on this one. Okay, so it's not production ready, of course. It's just a way to prototype stuff and share stuff. But there's, if you know how to use it well, you can prototype pretty quickly uh, stuff and sharing uh, with your team. And but yeah, of course there's limitation and the 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 semantic is a mess. It's it's uh, like <laughs> if you look at the the way they implement like paragraphs, it's it's kind of obscure. But um, you 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 have all your some comments with the name of your uh, the name of your uh, layers. So this div uh, divs everywhere. But I, I think we can. Um, I'm confident with the fact that uh, we will be able to define how. Uh, our own uh, tags, uh, HTML tags for each element, and maybe even uh, think about a web component or, or, or a way to have these uh, like proper uh, class names and stuff like that. We, we have the card, for example, here because it's a, a card component, but the, the the code could be way better. I think I'm going to uh, finish on this one. Thank you very much. We have two minutes. If you have any question, yeah. Oh yeah. The the ah uh, yeah the other uh, stats. Yeah, uh, I don't have the. You, you're talking about this. No idea. <laughs> you, you you can find this uh, this survey. It's online. If, if you find, a, sorry, a UX tool survey. Uh, I don't know if you have the precise the precise uh, data for all the others. <laughs> Maybe uh, I don't think so. Be because Penpot was uh, uh, mentioned like in previous surveys uh, in the most exciting tools, and but. I think this is a small part of this one. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Penpot is here. Most popular UI tools. Woo! <laughs> no. It's on the, on the list, yes. Any question? Yeah. Right now you can't, and and it's a shame. <laughs> but y you, I I'm dreaming of this, uh, like uh, even like importing codes and generating uh, uh, frames and layers. We can think of both sides, and I think there's a lot to explore in this um, uh, duality between design and code, and how can uh, code generate design and design generate code. And uh, where I am confident with Petpot is the I think they have the the right mindset and the right. Uh, uh, way of looking at it, and this is definitely something we we want to explore uh, as a community of practitioners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the risk every time uh, UI software try to export codes. Uh, the risk is like, oh, it, it, it's okay, and and. Uh, we don't we, we don't need front end developers anymore and <laughs> i don't have uh, work anymore and so I, I, it's not uh, for me it's only for prototyping right now and it, it's to to build fast prototype but if we can be closer uh, to the final result and uh, most of all uh, share the co common vocabulary and a way of uh, uh, crafting s stuff it's uh, a good step i guess Thank you.